welcome to The Near Memo, a weekly conversation about search, social, and commerce. What happened, why it matters, and the implications for local. Um, okay, so for our final item today, we're going to talk about ads, but in a different context, or we're going to talk about marketing in a different context, we're going to talk about Twitter. Clearly, the headlines, the technology news headlines have been dominated for the last couple of weeks by Twitter. First, speculation over whether Musk is going to take over the company, and now speculation about how Twitter will change in the wake of his uh, acquisition, assuming it still goes forward, because there's some people that have cast some doubt on that. And, um, you know, rather than get into the politics or whether China is going to hold its relationship over him or whether Musk is a reasonable guy or a budding fascist or whatever you want to say, um, uh, I, I think I think it's interesting for us to think about what is the future for marketers and advertising on Twitter under a Musk, you know, uh, scenario. And um, my own assessment of that would be that it's uh, even though Twitter just showed an increase in users and it improved results this week uh, in their Q1 earnings, I, I think that there will be negative consequences or there will be a negative impact on advertising on Twitter if Musk goes forward with many of the things that he's talked about, reducing staff, um, uh, you know, opening up uh, the content to less moderation, and so on and so forth. In particular, the sort of, if it, if it becomes a um, cesspool, as I called it in, the, in Monday's uh, newsletter, or maybe that was Wednesday, um, I think it was Wednesday, actually. Uh, then brands will be scared away, and so I think that I think there that that operates as a little bit of a disincentive to completely throw content moderation away. But I think also uh, people will just get scared about operating in an environment where there's more vitriol than there is today. What do you think the impact of opening up the APIs to alternative uses, displays, presentations, but including advertising in that? How do you think that? Well, I think that's an interesting. I think that's an interesting uh, scenario. That's what existed in the beginning, of course, and then Twitter shut all that stuff down. Really, maybe before its ads products were, um, you know, fully operational. I don't remember the timeline. I think that's really interesting. Some of the techno- technological stuff or the 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 um, product changes that Musk has talked about uh, might be very good for Twitter. Um, I don't know to what extent. Go ahead. Yeah. And I- yeah, I was going to say that I think that the the topic you just brought up, Mike, in terms of the sort of the open API, more open API, and um, we we even saw the Ben Thompson uh, strategy post this week about you know potentially splitting Twitter into essentially two different companies, um, and I think that it's to me it's an open question as to whether Musk is even going to care about advertising revenue um, from Twitter because there could be so much more on the the data side of things, which certainly seems to me. To have been his, you know, more more in his wheelhouse than advertising. Are you uh, talking about data, data so licensing? I, data I don't licensing know. deals as a source of revenue. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So I would say that that to, uh, if I had if I had to place a bet on where Twitter is going to where where Musk in particular is going to make the revenue he needs to pay off the interest on the loan that he took that he's taking out to buy the company, um, I would probably place it more on the data licensing side than the advertising side. Um, I don't know that there's going to be, I, I'm not I, I unless he has an incredible idea, which he very well may for how to radically alter the advertising um, piece of Twitter. Like I just, it doesn't seem like a platform that is really very well set up to maximize ads in the same way that Facebook and Instagram are. You're just not like the, the, the main lining of information. I think that's Ben Thompson's term no. doesn't lend itself to, ads nearly as well as this more passive like oh what are my friends doing what are what are these celebrities up to um in the sort of facebook instagram and even TikTok. Side well i things, mean so. it, you know the interesting one of the interesting points that was made i think in an article in the information was that um twitter has has neglected to really bu- build good performance ad tools uh they just they have just done a poor job of execution with performance advertising so, you know, you may be right that Musk doesn't care about ads, but that's an area, it seems, of, of, of opportunity. I, I looked up how much Twitter made in ad revenue in 2021, and it's only four and a half billion, which is, which is nothing. nothing. So you could yeah. well be right that there's a bigger opportunity, at least at current levels, with data licensing. 
But I mean, I don't know how much growth opportunity there is over time well, there. Mike's Mike's laughing, but I mean, what was well, Google's just, revenue? No, no, no. I, like, I know it's just so amazing to me that the three of us could say, "Oh, four and a half Well, it's nothing. not nothing in the app. You know, yeah, I mean, I know it's not nothing, and it's really? nothing compared to his net worth and to Google's right. gross sales. I get all that, but it's still yeah. got to be something. Well, Google made Google, it's Google for example. Billion. Yeah. So, so Mike, <laughs> it's obviously not nothing in the abstract, but it's 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 nothing relatively speaking, which is another conversation about. The, the just the concentration of wealth in, in a very small number of companies. But just to put that in context, Google just announced in Q1 this week, um, or whenever it was, my sense of time is totally distorted, um, <laughs> 54 billion in ad revenue. 50. That's not their total revenues. That's just ad revenue. That was just, wasn't that just search though? I thought, no, that's, I thought that's, there was that's another ad, Well, search is different. I mean, search is... Search is a component of that, but that includes, I think, YouTube and in, in, uh, and uh, and okay. display. I'm just looking at a top level number. And how much was Snap? Oh, you can't make me look up all these numbers right now. I'm not... <laughs> probably, probably also nothing, Mike. Well, it Snap, was also you know, nothing. Snap is really uh, Snap is kind of on the on the rise, sort of. On yeah, the it, it's it's, it's, it's got more yeah. users Snap than has Twitter. Snap has kind of overtaken Twitter. You know, Snap and Twitter were sort of peers, and Snap has has uh, has. Uh, improved and is growing much more than Twitter. But, you know, I think one of the reasons why Twitter is such a heated topic, I mean, this is something I was thinking about this morning, you know, why are people so worked up over Twitter? You know, it's just one of many of these companies out there um, is because it's kind of the last place where uh, there's a kind of common information source, even though that's not really true. You're not reading the same newspaper. Mm -hmm. You're, you're seeing a, a very dynamic, uh, product, but it's this. It's it's the one place now where everybody sort of congregates and sees information. That used to be the case with the evening news in decades past, and even certain newspapers. And now the media landscape is so fragmented, and people are so polarized, and there's such uh, echo chamber, uh, you know, kind of activity happening that there's there's kind of nothing left like it. And so I think Twitter does represent that, at least symbolically, to people. And so they don't want it to be become, you know, skew one way or another uh, entirely um, for what it's worth. But I, 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 I mean, I think whether it's, whether Musk abandons advertising and goes to data licensing or whether Twitter becomes a sort of a toxic place for brands, I think it's going to be a place where the future for ads is less bright than one, once might have been for sure. Yeah. On that, on that note, on the toxicity, so I wish I could remember who uh, tweeted this, but essentially they they were saying that, oh, guess what? There's a there's a social network that already tried the Musk uh, sort of unfettered, uncensored information model. It's 4chan. How well did that turn out for them? Yeah, so. I mean, that's it, it's it's another conversation about why things go in that direction, you know, um, but but at least yeah. at least uh, one reason may be that a minority, a relative minority, 25% of Twitter users are responsible for almost 100% of the content. So you've got a lot of people consuming. This is like reviews, Mike. You've got a lot of people consuming, but many, many fewer people actually generating the content in this case. And actually, that's I have a survey that says just that information, although it's interesting how the non-producers have changed over time. But Okay, and with that, we are out of time, and we'll see you next week for episode 63. As always, thanks for listening, and subscribe to Near Media, uh, and we'll see you, see you in the future. Thanks for joining David, Mike, and Greg. To stay on top of the latest developments in local, subscribe to our newsletter at nearmedia.co. We'll see you next week.